So today I gave a talk on the importance of physical activity for people with myeloma and amyloidosis. Um, and I covered the differences between physical activity and exercise and why that might be important. Um, and mainly it was that physical activity is all of our purposeful activity that expends energy and that that includes things that we do day to day with our jobs and occupation, as well as moving around the home, doing housework, doing gardening. Um, and it also includes exercise. But I define that exercise is specifically um, sort of purposeful, structured activity that has the aim of improving fitness or physical sort of function. Um, and that the, the difference is important just when we come to think about the literature and the, um, the evidence. Um, and then I summarized uh, uh, the evidence for exercise in hematological cancers generally, and that some of the benefits that are seen include um, increased uh, quality of life, improved physical fitness and function, helps to maintain good body composition, as well as psychosocial outcomes um, and psychological uh, outcomes of well-being. And also that there's uh, good evidence that exercise is helpful in terms of managing cancer-related fatigue. But one of the challenges is that most people living with hematological cancer have low levels of physical activity, particularly during treatment, but also after treatment. And that among myeloma patients, we have some of the lowest levels of uh, physical activity. Uh, I also spoke about the specific evidence of those undergoing stem cell transplantation um, and that those benefits in terms of exercise have been seen in systematic reviews, that it can improve functional capacity and fitness, quality of life and uh, psychological outcomes. And that also there's some emerging evidence that it may, that exercise introduced during admission for transplant or before may reduce the length of time that people spend in hospital as well. Um, and then I spoke specifically about the benefits of physical activity in myeloma and that the literature that looks at more physically active people living with myeloma shows that they generally have better quality of life, less fatigue, um, less comorbidities. And also that there's some evidence that those who are more active during treatment manage their treatment better, they have uh, increased tolerance of treatment, less dose reductions, and also spend less time uh, hospitalized. My talk also included the challenges of exercising or being physically active with myeloma, um, and it drew from some of the qualitative studies that are published that show that there are real enablers for people to be active. Myeloma patients recognize that exercise is beneficial and that being physically active may help their recovery and help them manage treatment. Um, but there's also a huge fear around being physically active because of the context of bone disease um, and also the language that is used when people are diagnosed often is, makes them fearful of being physically active and that um, really their preference is for personalized, individualized support from someone who is specialized not just in exercise but also recognizes the, um, the, the challenges that people with myeloma, that myeloma face. Um, and I finished up by talking about how we can better support um, sort of patient groups, but also patients themselves to advocate for better rehabilitation support within, within our clinical services. So by um, improving education across all of the health professional team, that it's safe to exercise, that it's beneficial, but also recognizing that people need uh, trusted information um, and trusted advice but also the opportunity to be signposted for specialist advice um, to increase their physical activity or start an exercise program should they need it.